So we're gonna be running out and fishing the seamounts just out, just, just off the map a little bit. Right on, right on, right on. That's, that's right, that's it, that's it. They're coming, they're coming. So we're gonna start her over to Cerveza. To me, obsession is my life. That's Caesar, take him. So we got 140 miles to run to the Cerveza. I will give up everything but my family for this passion that I have for fishing. Let's cap it to the boat. 10 knotted out here and wake up on the spot. Taking line. I've gotten the opportunity to fish all over the world for all kinds of species. Still jumping going away. And don't get me wrong, I love them all. Woo, what a bite. But there's one thing that gets me and that's blue marlin fishing. I just had to get out of the room, out of the hotel room and clear my head. The anticipation of this trip is just killing me. Thinking about running you know, 140 miles offshore to these seamounts, I needed this little release. Come out here and see if I can catch a snook here at the mouth of this river. Fishing this kind of peaceful setting, knowing what's coming, and what's coming is an epic blue marlin bite. I'm big. Here I am casting my fly rod, the mouth of this river on the beach. And tomorrow, it's gonna be total mayhem. I have been waiting for this trip for months. No, really, I've been waiting for this trip for, for years. I've been talking with my friends and these seamounts off of Costa Rica have quickly become legendary with the blue marlin fishing. We are traveling 140 miles offshore to these sea mounts. We're coming up out of 10,000, 12,000 feet of water up to some of these spots, 2,500 feet. And those mountains are providing structure or a location for the bait fish. And blue marlin, which are, you know, ocean travelers are coming to this area to feed. Yesterday afternoon at about five o'clock, relatively calm seas. We ten knotted it for the past 12 hours. Wake up here on the spot for sunrise. A little bit sportier conditions. We've already made bait this morning. We've got bait in the tuna tubes. We've got four on either side. This is what I've been waiting for. One of the most epic marlin bites in the world right now. It's been going on for a couple years out at these seamounts. And now I find myself 140 miles offshore in my 43-foot Maverick with Daniel. Yeah, this is the spot. We already have the live bait. We're gonna start it with live bait first, and then we do some conventional trolling stuff and fly fishing probably. And maybe some fly. Yes. If it settles down a little bit. Yeah. Daniel, you're good. I'm gonna make my this one the long bait, okay? Perfect. All right. You know, anywhere else in the world, you know, catching one or even two blue marlin in a day, much less a week, is a big deal. And in Costa Rica, over the past couple years, people have been experiencing just unbelievable catches. How many different sea mounts are in this area? Well, they're 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 four different shallow spots that's where we concentrate look for on the fish. Yes. And there's supposed to be one more out there. I need a sounder, sounder the bottom for them. Basically the whole time we were running out here last night, it was 10,000 feet of water. Yes. And yeah, these right. come up to about um, 3500. Yeah, 2500 something. 2500. Like that. Yes. The seamount is is a pretty unique piece of structure. You've got just imagine a farm pond that's a mud basin 
and in the middle of that mud basin there's one rock pile there's one piece of structure all the fish that live in that little farm pond are going to relate to that piece of structure did you mark any others seven the conditions are a little less than ideal there's certainly a lot of bait we got tons and tons of bait out here at this high spot but there are also a lot of sharks feels like feels like a shark man and we can barely keep our live baits in the water without getting bit by these sharks we might have to switch up and troll some lures troll some teasers we've got two teasers in the water now but um certainly hope we're getting climbed on it's, it's, it's full of life that's there's no doubt about it and typically it's maybe a two or three hour period during the day that the bite really turns on right on right on right on that's, 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 that's. The obsession of Carter Andrews is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Yozuri, fish the best. And by Shimano. Right on, right on, right on. That's, that's right, that's it, that's it. They're coming, they're coming. Right on, put it back a little bit. Right, right behind you. There it goes. There's, I see the bill right behind you. There it goes. Now, feed it. All right. I'm bent. I'm on. Ya listo. De una vez para atrás, de una vez para atrás, de una vez para atrás. Woo! All right. Huh? Wow, that was great. <laughs> That's better than shark fishing, <laughs> For right? Sure. Oh yeah. There he is. Nice fish. Just threw my bait. Threw the bait. Hold on. No way. First jump, he'd spit the bait. I had him. You would have think I had him on good. Circle hook. That was the perfect setup. We were having problems with the sharks and we needed to do something different. And Daniel said, let's switch over. Let's do some bait and switch. And it wasn't, we weren't into that three minutes. Where are we, Daniel? Three minutes. We get the first fish up on the right long, teased him right in, fed him the pitch bait. Unfortunately, got one jump out of him, spit the hook, but um, that's the way it goes. There's pressure in performing. I've got literally this world-class team behind me. And I am sitting here thinking, you know, Carter, you've got to be on the top of your game. You've got to make this happen. All anglers get to a point that, you know, they feel confident about their abilities and what they can do. You know, these guys are doing it every single day. They're out there producing. Yeah! All right, here we go. Woo! I'm coming in as, you know, kind of the pitch hitter. And... Yeah, baby! How about that? On my Stella, too. Ready when you are, Cap? Vaya, toca el líder, una vez. There he is. Nice. Woo hoo. Woo. No, bro. That's all right, put us on the leader. Que le tenga lente. Coming up again. There he is. Let's lead her. All right. Woo <laughs>
Look at that, I got the whole bait bag. <laughs> You've never caught a marlin on a, on a, a spinner rod? Never caught them all on a spinner rod. So, so today's gonna be the first? Let's do it. On the Stella? Yep. <laughs> it's fun, you know, with all this tackle, it's nice to be able to switch up and do things different. And, exactly. And as anglers, we always improve by trying new things, so. Part of this team that I'm fishing with is Daniel. Daniel started out, you know, 30 years ago running a 22 foot, as he says, a yacht, and has over 20,000 billfish releases to his credit. This past season, they caught an albino marlin, an albino blue marlin, the only albino that's ever been caught in the history of marlin fishing. It's, you know, kind of a, an amazing thing. Part of this team that I'm fishing with is Daniel, part of Maverick Boats and Maverick Sport Fishing Fleet. You know, what is it that actually got you into building boats? What The idea it was to build a boat made special for us, made uh, the way we want it and with everything we want in it. There's going to be another hatch over here. Oh, that's out of there. You know, the, the right amount of rod holders, like I said before, the tuna tubes, uh, the bridge have a, a, a good layout. You know what I really appreciate is y'all's woodwork. I mean, all the finish work on these boats is just, is, ab is absolutely perfect. Going from the 22 foot sport fishing fleet, the bigger boats and more range and whatnot has probably I mean, it obviously improved the fishing and the catchability. And it's amazing how the fishing industry uh, built up in Costa Rica. The whole thing been been you know, a big deal for us because designed can, by fishermen for fishermen. Exactly. You know, the transition that Daniel's been able to make from fishing pongas to you know designing and building. You know, I sit there and and I see the pride that he has in that boat while we were fishing it. Viene, viene el izquierdo, viene el izquierdo largo. Recoge el izquierdo corto. Ahí está, ahí está la par, Jack. Quítela, quítela, quítela. Still there. All over it. Right short teaser. Woo! Is that a bite? That's a bite! <laughs> Look at this fish. There he is. That's something new for you. Oh, yeah. On a spinning rod, huh? <laughs> Thank you, man. I love it. There's a man that's caught 20,000 billfish and it's his first uh, blue marlin on a spinning rod.
a ride. Thank you, man. How about that? <laughs> huh? Good, Good release and everything? I love it. All right. All right, let's get another one. Two for three. You know, marlin fishing in general is a game of opportunities. You don't have that many opportunities when you're fishing for one of the greatest apex predators in the ocean. You know, it's usually a chance encounter. Maybe we're gonna see one or two at best in a day. Hey, 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 hey. All right, we're on! Look at him go! <laughs> yeah, buddy! That's what I'm talking about! What a bite! <laughs> but here we're hoping for the opportunity of 10, 12, 15, 20, you know, blue marlin opportunities in a day. Keep going, keep going, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm do it a little, a little, a little easy. Another great fish. Just amazing. Three for four and it's a slow day. Taking line. There's so many things that we can't control while we're blue marlin fishing, and, and so much can go wrong. Just taking advantage of every opportunity that presents itself is, is the key to success. A big part of that is working together as a team. Here's the leader. Codfish. Woo! Woo! Yeah, baby! Nice release. Dude, that was just another example of yeah. what's happening here in Costa Rica. Yeah, uh, man. On these sea mounts. All, all worked out real good. You fish. promised me that fly fish. Yeah, well, let's do it. What do you think? A couple more like this. <laughs> okay. A couple more like that. <laughs> Thank Let's go. you. All right. Thanks, guys. You know, part of this whole adventure, this experience, is is what's about to happen now. We're 140 miles offshore, and we're sleeping out another night. We got three nights out here. Tomorrow's another day. These fish come and go. We could have one of those smoking 15, 20 fish days tomorrow. We'll see. The Obsession of Carter Andrews is brought to you by CV Boats, lead the way. Cuda Fishing Tools, fierce, tough, proven. Ray Marine, don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater with Ray Marine. Traeger Wood-Fired Grills, taste the wood fire difference. And additional support provided by the following brands. How, what are we going to start with this morning? Live bait or? What, uh, it's up to you. What, you what do you do? think? Well, let's start live bait and live bait. How, right. do, how it was. All right, live bait. Start of day two. See what kind of bite we have today. You know, maybe we have a new group of fish that have moved in. Looking forward to it. You know, that's the reason why I came to Costa Rica and all the way out here. 
140 miles offshore is looking for one of those days, for one of the legendary bites. I don't know, there's, there's something about it for me. Literally, it doesn't matter what I'm fishing for, but staying on point and being ready for that opportunity, the next opportunity that presents itself. It's the difference of failure and success. Left, left, left teaser. Take him, take him. Axel is coming to the boat. He's coming to the boat. No, no. You're ready. Love, 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 love. Spit it out. Now, you never bought this. I got him. Dale, dale, más, dale, más, dale, más. Got him? Yes, got him. We're on. Ah. Spit it. Let it sit, let it sit, let it sit. No, no, it's there, it's there. It's still there. Viene para el bote. He's coming to the boat. Nice job, Daniel. Nice job. Yoo-hoo! Come on, Look at baby. Me. Nice fish. That, that focus, I think, is what helps me be a better angler and, you know, better than the guy before me. That's the key to success, I think, is trying to control everything that you can control because there's so many things we can't control, but the things you can control, because it's gonna happen. You're gonna get the bite. There it comes, feed him. Come on, come ahead, come ahead. All right, I got him now. Nice. Woo -hoo. Rain or shine, Costa Rica. Woo